Everybody can hear us. Is everybody here? Shall we kick off? Yeah, let's kick off. Lovely. So uh, my name's Chris. That was Martin. Um, we're going to take you through a little bit of a journey over the next 30, 40 minutes to talk about um, mental health services, children's mental health services, acknowledge some of the challenges, particularly around data capture and reporting, but also some of the workflows that almost all services need to be able to support over time and particularly as services get larger. Um, I would encourage you to ask questions as we're going along. Um, there is a question panel, um, which you should find on your um, clicky interfacey thing. Please ask questions, Martin. Um, we'll make sure that we they get um, brought to attention. Um, and we'd love to get your questions as we go through. So don't hold back. Um, I'll either answer them uh, as we're going along, or um, I might save some to the end and go through some of those. But either way, please do ask some questions. Um, so uh, whilst this is a discussion about children's mental health, um, I wanted to start off briefly talking about adult mental health. Um, and that's because Maiden as a company has been working to provide a piece of software called iAptus, which we'll talk about today, uh, for mental health services for quite some time. I think uh, as it stands today, it's about 14 years that the, the software has been in development. It's always been web-based. So we were web-based even before Instagram was a thing. Um, we were part of the initial pilot that happened um, for adult services. There were two, one in Doncaster and one in Newham, and we supported the Newham um, adult service. Now, since then, the adult IAP program was rolled out across the country. There are now something like 140 providers of adult IAP care. And IAPTIS is now used in about 90 different services. Um, and probably even more providers. Now, if you quantify the number of referrals, we know that the national reports say that about 1.4 million referrals were made to adult IAPT services. Um, but we also know from our records that in that same period of time, approximately um, a million of those records were logged in to IAPTIS. So we can pretty confidently say that between the number of services that use IAPTIS and the number of referrals that have come through, um, IAPTIS is currently used by about two thirds of the adult IAPT providers. Um, now that didn't happen overnight, that's happened over a good period of time. Um, and you might think, okay, that's all well and good, but we're here to talk about children's services. Well, about six years ago, um, CYP IAPT was starting as a transformation project really within CAM services. You probably know this better than me. And a lot of work was done working with different services, a variety of different training techniques were um, happening. And there was a real focus on outcome measures being part of, um, a bit, part of the delivery model um, and also about data capture. So we thought we've been doing adult for good some time. Um, how hard can it be? We'll just change some questionnaires and everything will be fine. Um, I can honestly say we were wrong. Um, and as we started to work with services that were in children, uh, in children's services, in CAM services, we realized actually there was an awful lot that we could learn and, and, and learn we did. So we've now been working with um, providers over the last seven years. There are about 35 different CYP mental health services um, that are using IAPTIS today. And we've taken on a huge amount of feedback um, from working with those services. Things that just don't happen in adult, um, we've built in to make sure it is a good tool for working with CYP. So that would include multiple allocator therapists, that would inc include a whole swathe of outcome measures, um, an awful lot of different letters that might need to be used, um, and a very different data collection regime and, and challenges that face um, lots of providers, 
particularly charities. We work an awful lot with charities and uh, um, a very frequent um, circumstance that we come across is that charities often have multiple different um, funding streams that might come from things like the, the lottery, um, might come from commission services, it might come from things like children in need or Red Nose Day. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but um, that's quite different to what happens in adult services. Um, so we now work with a large number of providers so a good few different MIND charities, um, big national charities, obviously MIND and Bernardo's are examples of that. Um, we work with some large NHS organisations, so Southwest London, St George, um, AWP down here in Bath and Bristol, um, a, a good few up in uh, the North East, um, Tyneside, North Tyneside, South Tyneside, Gateshead, um, so we work with not just charities, large charities, NHS organizations, but we also work with a good number of local charities as well. So off the record in, in Bristol, it's a relatively small charity. Why Pass Up in Liverpool is an example of a larger one and the ADHD Foundation, a bit more of a specialist charity um, based up in, uh, near Liverpool as well. Um, and they're just the, the ones I picked out in preparation for today. Um, the services we work with vary in size quite significantly. Some of the small ones we work with down in the southwest. Um, down here in the uh, in the lovely Cornwall, Dorset, Devon area, they might have only two, two or three users. Whereas some of the large NHS trusts, particularly Southwest London, might have 300 users and um, AWP again it's probably around 300 users so from 2 to 10 to 20 all the way up to a few hundred um, IAPSIS is used and we support all of them in the same way now over that time the number of users that have been um, switch into IAPTIS because maybe they've been coming from paper, maybe they've come from um, local systems, might be Excel spreadsheets, access databases. Um, the, we, we've certainly seen the uh, demands and the burdens on services to capture data. Um, commissioners have certainly been encouraged by NHS England and NHS Digital to make sure the services they commission are um, capturing and reporting data. And over the last 18 months in particular, the use of uh, uh, a rigorous data recording and reporting system has, has certainly grown. And we're now, even according to NHS Digital's data, the largest um, by uh, number of services using it, we're the largest um, most frequently used system for CYP and mental health services. So Maiden has been growing over the last 15 years. Um, uh, we, when it first started out, there was one man in his attic. Um, when I joined 11 years ago, there were, uh, I think I was number eight. And as of last week, um, we now have over 90 employees at Maiden. So as a company, we've been growing and that's allowed us to continue to develop the software and provide and then uh, and expand our support services. So today we've got 30 full-time developers working on the system, um, 11 different people in our support team, and a, a variety of other teams that look at data and reporting, that look at the networking, uh, a whole suite of project managers um, that help coordinate the development activity. So we've been growing in size. Um, but we've also been growing in maturity as well. So today, um, and actually for the last six years, five years, we've had ISO 27001. Um, for that pleasure, we get audited every uh, six months. In fact, it was only two weeks ago that BSI came in for a, um, a couple of days to, as they do, audit what we're doing, making sure we're adhering to the standards. So that's about information governance. Um, but we not only have to develop the software to be secure from an information governance point of view, we also have to develop software to be clinically safe. And the NHS 
um, does a number of things actually really well. And one of them is um, it's led the world in developing standards for um, creating software for use in clinical settings um, to make sure they're not just secure, but clinically safe. And so we again have outside auditors that come in, look at the, the process of development, look at the software and its features and make sure that it's not creating any untoward clinical risks in its use, um, particularly in mental health services. So we can confidently tick that box as well. So, okay, that's all well and good, but what does IAPTIS actually do? So what I was wanting to do is just take a minute to take you through a journey um, that could be available to you if you want. Now, IAPTIS is made up of a whole suite of modules. Um, not every service uses every module. They, um, they don't need to, and often they don't, um, uh, they, they don't want all of the features. But what we've tried to do as we've developed the software is bring together a suite of tools that work together to deliver a workflow, if that suits you. Um, so what I'm about to, to walk you through here is a workflow that you could adopt if you wanted to. It's not to say that you should, but the pieces are there um, as and when you need them. So I'm going to talk you through um, a potential patient journey. We have a little girl, um, for the sake of argument, we'll call her Emily. Emily um, is needing some kind of support and her parent or carer um, is really looking to help support her um, with the difficulties that she's having at, at the moment. Maybe that could be a degree of anxiety, for example. So I suspect um, they would do what almost all of us would do, and that would be talk to their GP, probably do a bit of Googling. Um, and that may lead them to either a website where the child themselves can en engage. Often a lot of our services provide anonymous um, an anonymous ways for children to engage themselves, particularly when they're a little bit older, or they might just want to be able to self-refer themselves. Um, if they're a bit younger, they might want the parent to, um, to do the referral, or indeed they may simply go to a GP and the GP might help them with a the referral themselves. So whilst in this instance it says self-referral, um, many of our services designed um, referral forms which are professional referral forms. And indeed you could have both a professional referral form and a self-referral form. Um, and once that referral form is, um, is created and we create the form for you, um, it would have the fields, we talk with you and design it to meet what you would like to capture. That might be about the personal details of the patient or it, indeed it might be a little bit more about the referral themselves. Why are they getting in touch? Um, once the referral form is complete, um, Maiden as a, as a company recognize the difficulty in storing sensitive patient identifiable information, as is obviously the case with a referral form. Um, and we know that that can be a real burden for services to do securely. So we've gone to um, quite significant lengths to uh, secure and encrypt the data as it comes in. So you, you don't have to take that burden yourself. We will look after that data for you. And once the referral button is submitted, um, the data flows through into the instance of IAPTIS, your instance of IAPTIS that the form's connected to, and it'll appear in an inbox within the service. Um, and usually um, one of the admin team would then process the, um, the incoming referral. So processing might just simply be checking, first stage on the care pathway here, is checking that the patient is in the area that you support, maybe in the right age group and has the right um, as, as appropriate uh, problems um, and so isn't an inappropriate referral for you. It's the kind of thing that you would look to support. Now, in the context of um, a lot of what I'll be talking today is about the mental health minimum data set and NHS and commission services in particular. Now, it doesn't mean to say all our services are um, are commissioned by the NHS and far from it indeed, but they tend to have the widest possible um, 
capture and reporting requirements. So if we can deal with the NHS more often than not, we can support you in the other um, commission services you might have from other funders. So in this example, what you see on screen here is, is a flowchart. It represents um, the care pathway or the steps that the service goes through in looking after their service users. Every single service that we work with has their own unique care pathway. It's one of the things we do when we start setting and commissioning the services, the instance of IAPTAS with our customers. And that allows the software to fit around the way that you deliver your, your um, help and provision rather than having to fit the other way around and um, adjust your service to fit the software. So the first thing you'll see over in the top right hand corner is a number and that's just representative of an NHS number and indeed when a referral is submitted through the, the online form one of the first things that happens when it arrives in IAPTIS is that we'll automatically try and look the patient up against the NHS spine and pull in an NHS number. Um, we'll also try and um, check to see if the patient already exists within the within the service and that both just speeds up the um, the administrative process of registering the patient it makes sure you're not duplicating patients and it also means that a referral is um, is put in context against other care so if for example a, an existing patient um, referrals come for a patient that you've already seen it starts to associate any further care with that patient right from the beginning and you can see any history that may have, have, have happened with that patient in your service in the past um, and then further steps might happen this care pathway here is a mix of green blue and white stages the green stages typically are administrative stages um, where you might write letters get in touch with people phone them up just check eligible eligibility um, the next stages down here are um, blue and then usually they're followed by a white stage and a blue stage would represent a waiting list so if you need to track your um, uh, assessments or may, maybe your different treatment modalities need to know how many people are currently waiting for any of those then IAPTAS does that really straightforwardly and it also prompts, acts as a prompt to users to know what to do next. You'll also see a little Rio logo up in the top right hand corner. Um, it's not a feature that's released yet, but should be in the next week or two. Um, we've got a built in integration with Rio um, that allows the record in IAPSIS to um, compare and see if a record exists in the Rio, um, which, if you're working from an NHS trust, is typically used by them as a secondary care. Um, patient record system and um, is often therefore used by CAM services and there's there's often a concern that somebody in um, by using a, a dedicated system like IAPTIS would people would lose track of the fact that they got a RIO record so the integration allows um, users of both systems to check against the, system, the alternative system and so you can often have still really good um, uh, communications across teams. So now um, Emily and her mom have moved through assessment and following the assessment uh, a certain treatment type's been agreed with um, Emily and her carer. So they move into a waiting list um, to be seen and then ultimately at some point an appointment will be booked. So uh, appointment can be booked in the diary and the system IAPTUS has automatic text reminders built in should you want to use them and we've got built-in dashboards for you to be able to see how effective the um, the sms messages are at encouraging people to turn up and reducing dnas and so every service is different but we frequently see a reduction in dnas of at least 10 percent in a lot of services you can also use built-in messaging features for sms for example should you want to keep patients informed a bit like Amazon of the progress of their referral so instead of being sat on a waiting list without any idea of whether they've been considered or moved or a, a therapist has been allocated um, IAPTIS allows you if you want to automatically update the patient when an action happens which generally we've seen helps increase engagement with the service and again reduce dropouts 
Um, another feature that we built into IAPTIS and is used particularly significantly at the moment with lockdown and people not being able to be seen face to face. Um, outcome measures are a key part of both adult and children's services. Some of the outcome measures like RCADs and SDQs can be quite long and can take up significant time in a session. So we've developed a secure way of um, sending um, service users an email link that they just have to click on, there's no usernames or passwords, and they'll be presented with the outcome measures that were selected at the point that the appointment was made. You might choose an SDQ, you might choose an RCAD, you might choose one of the other outcome measures. And um, the system remembers that, and a day or two before the appointment, an email is sent with a link in it, um, and all you have to do is click on it. And that saves significant time in the session and um, can actually increase engagement because the patient feels part of the journey um, and they made the effort to submit the data. And so anecdotally, um, you, you see um, engagement rates um, uh, appropriately increased as well. Um, if not all patients would want to complete an outcome measure, indeed, if they're quite young, that may not be appropriate at all. So um, that's not a problem. In session, um, you can complete outcome measures. You can obviously do it the, um, the traditional way and maybe asking the, the service user, the parent or the patient to complete a paper-based questionnaire and then transpose the data in. But obviously it, with an electronic patient record system, you can you can you have alternatives. So um, we've built in questionnaires that can be used on tablets, and maybe you would like to give the patient the tablet whilst they're sat there, and they can um, fill in the questionnaire there and then, um, and hand the tablet back to you. It's um, secured appropriately, so the patient wouldn't start looking at things they shouldn't do, but saves the therapist significant time in scoring and uh, calculating um, statistical significance. So if we take RCADs as an example with um, six or seven different subscales, if you do the full inventory, um, plus um, uh, the same number of T-scores that need to be cal captured for a 40 plus item inventory, it can take a lot of clinical time to do that work. Now, computers are great at maths and scoring, um, so why not get that to do it, the work for you? So IAPTAS will do that. And you can use full inventories, perhaps at the beginning, you can use symptom trackers um, if you're focusing on a particular strength or difficulty um, over the course of a number of sessions. And then um, at the end, you might do the full, the full inventory again. Um, it's your choice. You can choose how you would like to do it. Some of the uh, outcome rating scales have got things like smiley faces and sliders, and we've worked hard to replicate what we've seen on a, on a paper version um, so that both clinicians and patients are familiar and it's obviously staying within the validation of the inventory. Now, those tools that help you collect the outcome measures um, not just make life easier for recording the outcome measures, but they also allow you to um, plot within the patient record the progress of the patient over time. And that can be really helpful to present back to patients, show how they're progressing. They may not feel on a given day that you know they've made progress. And um, being able to show them, okay, today might not feel like a good day, but for example, look how far you've come. We've also built in um, all of the banding that's required for the different questionnaires. So where a questionnaire is scored and has clinical banding, they're displayed on a graph um, for you. And you can display multiple bandings on the system as well, on a given graph, oh, sorry, multiple outcomes on a single graph. So the patient uh, and their carer, the service user would move through your service each step of their journey on the care pathway would be recorded and is available for reporting purposes later on. So you can do effective capacity management and effective wait time reports really easily. So when Emily comes to be discharged along with her um, carer, you know you've captured all of the information as well as you can. And hopefully it's not been a painful process. So I'll briefly talk about um, 
whilst we've discussed there um, a, uh, a series of uh, features that can be um, knitted together to provide an overall journey in the system, I thought it might be appropriate just to show you a few of the, um, the features that are, are native to IAPTIS um, such that you can maybe start to build up a picture of how that might support your service. So children's services often are made um, as staffed by people working a very mix, uh, uh, disparate mix of full-time and part-time. So you obviously have some full-time staff, but often you also have volunteers maybe working a couple of hours a week, maybe working half-time or maybe working you know, three-quarter time. And keeping a track of who's available when um, in a big diary can sometimes be quite time-consuming. So the diary in IAPTIS allows all of your clinicians um, to put their availability into the system and obviously state at the same time what kind of thing they would be doing at a given time. And typically, they might denote uh, a Monday morning to be an assessment um, few hours and then maybe that afternoon they're typically involved in treatment if indeed they're working at all. And then rather than having to look for free slots in the diary, the diary search feature allows your admin team to really quickly book in appointments based on um, searching across days and times and purposes, looking for an assessment, for example, that allows them to um, quickly find a free slot um, that they can confidently book the patient into. We're also currently trialing online appointment bookings too, so that having um, triaged the patient and accepted them into the service, um, one of our customers at the minute is then allowing the patient to go further and then book a time and a date that suits them and that's fully integrated into IAPTIS. So whilst it's not a feature on wide release at the moment, um, we're looking to extend its availability later throughout the year. Um, we've talked about outcome measures and I mentioned um, uh, the RCADs and this is just re-highlighting re that here. So here we've got a, um, a temporary logo, but you would be able to insert your um, services logo. And then when an appointment is booked in the diary, you can select the outcome measures that are appropriate for that, um, that appointment and that patient, given whatever needs they might have. Now, outcome measures can be um, numerical and they can also be um, a lot more visual. Um, so rather than having to whip out a ruler and measure the difference, distance between smiley faces, um, we're able in this instance to allow patients to, um, in the session for example, move a slider from left to right to signify how they're doing and that data be recorded as if it had been entered on paper. Um, outcome measures we've talked about already. And once you have hit certain points in the process of looking after a patient, you may want to spend some time um, keeping referrers, schools, uh, GPs, or indeed parents up to date with the progress of a referral. So IAPTIS has a comprehensive uh, templating system, which allows you to, um, as a super user, create templates for different purposes. They might be templates for um, inviting patients to appointments or following up after a DNA. They might be um, discharge summaries for GPs or acknowledgements of referrals. And rather than having to write out a, uh, a letter in full, uh, the templating with its um, comprehensive mail merge features allows you to really quickly, almost instantly, create a letter, a standardized letter with the data pulled in from the database, um, significantly sa saving time for your clinicians and your admin team. And then once a letter has been created, you can apply different headers and footers. Maybe you work in two or three different locations and you want, um, you want different headers and footers for the address for those different locations. That's absolutely fine. Um, and then we also have a variety of options for communicating and sending um, communications with, uh, with those letters. So 
you may, for example, not want to print out, fold, put into envelopes, stick stamps on and put in the post letters. Um, uh, we therefore integrate with what's called hybrid mail. So when you hit the print button in IAPTIS, if you would like it, you can get that letter printed, posted uh, for less typically than half the price of doing it yourself. So if you were to buy a stamp and put it in the post, you can buy some envelopes and, and add up the time to send a letter yourself. Normally that kind of calculation comes out about somewhere between £1.10 and £1.50. Using the built-in hybrid mail function, you can get that letter posted for about 53p. So that's often helpful if you're sending letters to patients, but if you're, if maybe if you're in the NHS or maybe you're needing to send letters to GPs, then we work with the main different um, GP letter providers to be able to send letters directly to um, GP systems. So Docman, Mesh and MIG are all again directly integrated into IAPTIS. That can get the letter sent again, not just um, much more cheaply than having to put it in the post, but it means that the GP get it, gets it within a couple of minutes and the GP doesn't then have to scan um, and upload the letter, it goes straight into the GP's record. So again, they like that and it can be time saving. We also have built in SMS templating. Um, not only can you send appointment reminders, you can send ad hoc messages and you can send um, messages to groups of patients, maybe um, wishing them luck in their exams, maybe um, uh, keeping them informed about the progress of their referral. You can as quickly send a letter to uh, 10 or 20 people as you can with one using our bulk actions feature. Um, and makes SMS and letters easy, really easy to send. We talked about um, Care Pathways briefly. You saw this as a nice simple Care Pathway. Um, the Care Pathway is there to really represent how you as a service deliver care to your patients. Um, and every service is different. So here's a really simple one. <clears throat> and here's a not really simple one. Um, this service in particular has um, a completely different way of delivering the care to their patients with lots of different treatment options. Um, you can, we would, when we commission and mobilize and um, configure a service for you, spend a good amount of time working with you to understand how your service works, um, design a care pathway with you, which we think will deliver your needs and help support you. And then when you come to um, actually use the system, almost always you'll find that it doesn't, that you, you, you didn't think of something. And that's absolutely fine. Um, you can update your care pathway as often as you like. Your account manager will get to know you and your service and will work with you to design and implement a care pathway that works for you. Then um, we're really proud and pleased with the care pathway tool within IAPTIS. And this is one of the reasons why. As your service grows and you have patients working, uh, flowing through your system, one of the most difficult things is keeping track of who is where, how many people are waiting here, who's currently being treated there. Um, not only does the care pathway allow you to see where everybody is now, but it also allows you to do some really useful reporting. So over the month or the quarter, your commissioners or funders um, often want to know numbers of referrals or numbers of waits, um, time for waits from referral to treatment, and the care pathway would really support you being able to easily track and report that information. So IAPTIS doesn't just work um, with a single kind of service. Um, one of the things we saw with adult services is they tended to be um, commissioned to deliver a single kind of service. But as soon as we started working with children's services, we really recognize, particularly with charities, they often have multiple forms of funding. They might get some, inf some funding from um, a local NHS commissioner. They might get some funding from um, children in need or um, Red Nose Day. Uh, and 
it's great to get those forms of funding, but often those funders want um, information about how the money's spent, typically how many people have been referred, what kind of activity sessions, etc., have been delivered under that funding. So IAPTIS can have um, all of the different um, the funding streams or contracts that you have um, set up within them. And so you can record all of the activity and set that you deliver, but separate it out across the different funding streams. So if you need to be able to, at the end of the month, um, uh, pull a report off saying how many NHS sessions have been delivered, um, and then how many children in need sessions have been delivered, you can do that really straightforwardly. We also started to see that services are um, delivered differently depending on, or sometimes are delivered differently um, depending on the funding stream. So for example, the service care pathway for a uh, CYP IAPT service or a Trailblazer service might actually be subtly or very different to maybe some family interventions where you're organizing lots of group work, for example. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Not only can you separate out the reports um, and the work uh, delivered by your service from uh, uh, a recording point of view for the different kinds of contracts you have, but we can also develop different branches on the care pathway that um, reflect the different um, care pathway or the different um, steps that you go through to deliver one program as, as opposed to another. So you can have multiple branches on your care pathway, often reflecting different delivery models for your different funding streams. And whilst IAPTIS um, supports you from a, uh, a, a recording point of view, um, being able to record who the patients are, what kind of treatment that they've had, how long they've stayed in a given stage, um, we never lose sight of the fact that IAPTIS is used by services to, to, to deliver clinical treatment. And a, a common um, requirement for the safe delivery of service is that there is um, supervision, maybe monthly, it might be fortnightly or weekly. Um, most therapists, clinicians will have a supervisor, maybe internal, maybe external. And IAPTIS allows you to effectively and efficiently record your supervision sessions. It'll help set them up, um, it'll help put them in the diary, it'll help you identify the patients that you need to bring to supervision, and um, it will help record the supervision itself um, rather than having to go into your different patient records to um, and flip between different patients to record supervision notes. IAPTIS allows you to do it all in one, all in one um, page and both the supervisee and the supervisor can record their notes. Um, and they may be part of the patient record or they may be more considered part of the um, professional development record for the clinician, either is possible. And whilst we're on the, the subject of um, keeping an eye on our patients, um, there are reporting tools built into IAPTIS. So if you want to know how many patients have been referred this month, obviously um, reports exist to be able to uh, configure those different reports, but not only can it display that information as a uh, as a table, as you might expect, with different numbers um, that you can maybe display on screen or um, export to Excel. You can also start to display that information in more visual forms. And we've got a built-in mapping tool um, that keeps the data secure within IAPTIS, um, but it allows you to spot patterns that perhaps might not otherwise be seen unless you did plot it on a map. So if you're maybe validating postcodes, um, you may not see that somebody's been recorded with a wrong postcode um, unless you plot it on a map. And you can as easily view it on, in an Excel as on a map with the built-in tools in IAPTIS. Now, let's talk about MHSDS submissions. They are fun, aren't they? Um, so if we have a look at the MHSDS, this is what it looks like. There are about 57 tables that form the MHSDS as a whole. 
Um, and if you were to do a truly comprehensive um, report of, of CYP activity, then in theory about 23 of those are in scope um, for the MHSDS. This is version four, obviously um, version 4.1's just come out, so there's um, a slight update to this slide due. Um, so how does IAP to support you when you're having to deliver the MHSDS and report on that? Well, you'll see here that there are a number of patients and the, those are um, flowing into IAPTAS. So as long as your admin and clinicians are simply recording the activity that's happened, um, the notes, the appointments, um, which they will be because um, that's how IAPTAS supports the service. Then at the end of each month, um, the fields that have been set up within the system and the options that were configured at the start or indeed updated by your local super user um, allow all of the required mapping through to the MHSDS and its required values. So when you get to the end of the month and you need to run your MHSDS, it's um, simply a case of running the report, allowing you to um, export each of the, uh, the tables that you're um, may be obliged to re report by um, your commissioner. Um, so while some services are reporting 23 tables, um, others might only be re reporting four, five, six tables. So either way, you can hit the start date, uh, choose the start date and the end date, let's say it was last month, and then you hit run. IAPTIS will um, produce um, a fully compliant CSV file that can then be simply imported and will support you with instructions about how easy it is to import it into the intermediate database and the access database that is supplied by NHS Digital. Um, and then you would log in and upload that onto SDCS Cloud. So if you are currently um, fighting with spreadsheets and people I've been speaking to over the last two weeks have got um, often a responsible uh, admin worker or, a, or a, um, an, um, a whiz with reports who's fighting spreadsheets, multiple spreadsheets um, every, every month, then literally IAPTIS is start date, end date, run, and then import. Um, so it should significantly reduce the amount of time and increase your accuracy as well. So, um, conscious of time, we're about 45 minutes in. Um, I've come to the end of what I wanted to talk about today, but I would really welcome any of your questions. Um, we have a full suite of reporting tools in the system. And we've also got a lot of experience setting services up. Um, if, to give you an example, um, since January, we've set up approximately uh, 12 different services on top of the um, the, the the 20 plus that we'd, we'd been working with up until now. So we're seeing the use of IAPTAS grow significantly, particularly over the last few months. And has anybody noticed it's really raining? I don't know if it's um, just me in Bath, but it's like a monsoon has hit. So please do feel free to ask any questions. Um, if you'd like to find out more, if you'd actually like to see what the program looks, looks like um, itself, then I'd be more than happy to arrange a demonstration. Um, my, oh, my email address is there um, or contact us through, um, through the Maiden website and I'd be more than happy to chat with you, find out more about your service um, and talk through with you how we might be able to um, configure the system to meet the needs that you have. Don't forget that we work with services from two right up to um, two or three hundred. So please feel free to ask some questions. Have you got any questions, Martin? I'm afraid Martin's actually lost the sound. Um, oh, no. Yeah, so he, he can't actually ask any, but um, I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with this um, this go to webinar uh, system, but there is a chat box. If you did have any questions um, or if you'd like to let us know which uh, service 
are you from or anything at all um please just pop it in the uh, in the chat channel um it's called questions in the uh, control panel um we will be we have been recording this um webinar as well so if you'd like to have a copy of the um the recording maybe you want to share it with some colleagues then i'm pretty sure we'll be able to um make that available you may be able to be able to log in again after the end is that right jen yeah that's right yep marvelous okay well um if you've got any questions and you, you know, either you can't find the question box now or um uh, you don't have time then thank you very much for sparing the time um today i uh, appreciate it's a friday so um you don't want to spend longer doing that um on a webinar than you might otherwise want to be um i really value you um coming along and finding out a little more and please do email and get in touch if there's anything more you'd like to find out um meanwhile have a great weekend and uh, i would look forward to very much having a chance to talk to you thanks a lot bye bye